True Crime Dropouts may contain some graphic and explicit content that may not be suitable for some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Hi guys, you're listening to True Crime Dropouts. I'm Vanessa. And I'm Mary. And today, we're going to cover... I don't even know how to, like... Like, describe this case. Because <laughs> it's not, like, really wild. But it's, like, really... I don't know. It makes you just kind of question people. Okay, okay. So, we're going to talk about Chen Tao or the True Way cult. Okay. Mm-hmm. A little cult action. Yeah, a little cult action. I didn't Vanessa really know Vanessa does the cults. I'm more of a... I'm more of a sex crime gal. Yeah, you're more of a sex crime, serial murder. Really I'm more of gruesome. Like, yeah. And you like and the I'm, missing, the cults. The conspiracy. The conspiracy, yeah. Yeah. But that's what makes us We balance you know, each other out. Really good. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't know too much about this case until I think it was like about last year or so. Um, you know, because I like cults, so I was, like, looking online at, like, different cults, and I came across these guys, and I don't know. It's just weird. It's it's weird. Okay. So, <laughs> so we're going to start with a guy named, okay, I'm, I'm just going to say now, it's one name I've got to pronounce, but, like, I'm thankful that there are not a lot of foreign names in this case. <laughs> That's why I've been sticking to the to the easy easy countries with the easy names. I wanted to venture out. That's my fault. <laughs> anyway, so we're gonna start off with a guy named Han Ming Chen, who was born on the twenty second of April, nineteen fifty five, in Chai Taiwan. Okay. So I don't know too much about his childhood. I do know that. His father was a merchant, and then his mom was just kind of that traditional Chinese housewife. Mm -hmm. So I don't really know, like, what their dynamic was or, um, I guess, just, like, the way that he was raised or any of like that. I don't know if there was anything super outstanding in in his life. I don't know. I do know that his, both of his, both his mother and his father died when he was young. I don't know how old he was, but I'm going to assume he's probably maybe in, like, grade school when all of this happens. His uh, mom died of a stroke, and then his dad died a couple of years after that. Oh. Yeah, so sadly, this guy had it kind of rough in that scenario. So Chen, you know, didn't let the death of his parents, you know, bring him down. He still went and continued his grade school, And he eventually graduated and then went on to university where he would achieve a bachelor's degree in political science. And then he would later go on to get his master's degree in social science. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as we could, or at least I could find online, and as far as people who know about this case know, it was said that Chen was raised in a Buddhist household. Now, I don't know, like, if his parents were, like, strict Buddhists or... I don't know how involved they were in Buddhism, but he was raised Buddhist. But during his time in school, Chen would claim that he was an atheist. And I read this research paper. I'm going to link it on our... Uh, sources, but in this research paper, a lot of people thought that this he might have kind of veered his way to atheism because in Buddhism, like you, life is is pictured a different way than it is in like Christianity. There's like reincarnation and all this other stuff, and I it, a lot of people credit his like turn to atheism to to be kind of like he lost his faith in like Buddhism mm-hmm. when his parents died. Mm-hmm. But, I, I mean, I, I don't know how. I'm speculating. So, in 1983, when Chen was 28 years old, he got a job as an associate professor um, that taught social sciences at the Chai Nan Junior College until 1993. 
Now, as we remember, I did say that Chen had considered himself an atheist. But sometime in 1992, Chen claimed that he had this sudden religious revelation. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he said that God came to him in a voice in his head and told him that he needed to pursue a religious path. Okay. Okay. Which doesn't sound too crazy. No, you people know. say that stuff all the time. Yeah. So that's, you know, not too crazy. No. And so that's kind of what Chen did. He decided that, you know, it was time to kind of go back and explore religion. So he went on to study various Buddhist sutras. He studied the Old and the New Testament uh, of the Bible. And then he also read what's called the Tao Tao Te Ching, which is uh, a fundamental text of Taoism. Oh, I just hit the crap out of my microphone. <laughs> with all of these, you know, different learnings that he that he's reading with like the Bible and, you know, Buddhist text, he starts to kind of explore these new age religions. So not he's not sticking to, you know, your traditional, you know, religious format. He, when he was kind of exploring all of these different, you know, r- r- churches and religious leaders, he kind of saw a flaw in a lot of them. He thought that it was kind of unfair for these quote-unquote religious masters to charge people hundreds or even thousands of dollars to kind of listen to the word of God. Oh, they charge you? Well, I mean, and think of it kind of like um, Joel Olstein. <laughs> well, you could go to his church for free. You could, but, like, if you become a member, you're supposed to give him, like, 15% of your, like, yearly income. Oh, oh, you're talking about, like, um, what's it called? The tithes and offerings. Yeah, something like that. And so okay. I don't know what they call it in Taiwan, but he just thought it was kind of unfair for mm-hmm. these people who were supposed to be spreading the word of God to be asking for money. Okay, yeah. You know, he just thought it wasn't right. That's a common argument with the religions yeah he thought you know that the people who used god's word as a way to become rich and famous <coughs> joel Stein, <laughs> were quote-unquote heavenly devils or kind of like wolves in sheep's clothing yeah you know he he just he he didn't really like this he had joined a ufo religious group hmm. in the time that he's kind of Exploring um, these religions. Exploring, yeah. And he kind of saw this heavenly devil uh, type person in the in the woman who led the group. Okay. And so he didn't like this. And he was like, you know, if, if you're supposed to be teaching me A, B, and C, you know, I just don't see how I can trust you. So he left this so-called group. Now, when he left the group, Chen being as vocal as he was about how the way that he felt about this he wasn't the only one that left there were a couple of other people from that same group he was in who agreed with Chen's Chen views felt about mm-hmm. the way they were teaching yeah and so they all left the group joined Chen, Chen and uh, created their own little religious group which they called was it like a good amount of people or it was like five people I couldn't find an exact number of okay. how many people left the group to start this little organization. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to guess maybe I'm going to speculate and say like 40. Oh, okay. At, at, you know, I, I'm not sure. Um, but they created this little group and it, it was called the Soul Light Resurgence Association. So Chen had opened the first church in Tainan, Ch- Tainan City in Taiwan, and he allowed a fellow um, follower named Ma, Ta- Ma Tao Hung to open another church in a northern part of Taiwan. And in this time, you know, by 1996, they had centers all over Taiwan, north, south, east, west. They were there. So they were growing. They were growing. 
you know, like every preacher or whatever, you're going to have your own kind of revelation and what like God tells you and, Mm -hmm. you know, what you think um, is correct to tell your followers. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that Chen would preach about was that it was said to him by God that North America was the pure land of God. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm, maybe. <laughs> just I, 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 I don't know. He with to her on horn. I know to do her on horn. Um, and, and with this kind of uh, theology that he, like, brought up that, like, you know, North America is it's God's go land. On. Yeah, he decided mm. to... He must have never been to North America. (laughs) (laughs) He must have never been to, like, the South. (laughs) Mm. But he went on to self-publish a book called Mm. The Practical Evidence and Study of the World of God and Buddha. Interesting. A fusion. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, very, because, you know, (laughs) it's interesting. I don't know. (laughs) So this book obviously detailed Chen's beliefs and religious ideas, as well as apparent messages that he would receive from God. These messages would be along the lines of telling Chen that his followers and him Mm -hmm. should all move to America so that they could prosper and survive the Great Tribulation. Hmm. Okay. Which is like an apocalypse. Okay. So, like I said, they must have never been to America. I mean, we're not all like what you see on TV. Yeah. Um, and so then Chen and multiple of his followers, uh, roughly about, I read in different articles, about 2,000 of his followers mm-hmm. all decided to leave Taiwan mm-hmm. and move to San Dimas, California. Okay. Just going to the Cali. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when they moved from Taiwan, they changed the church's name once again. So now it was no longer the Soul Light Resurgence Association, but now it was called the God Salvation Church. Okay. But a lot of people would call it Chen Tao or what it's supposed to be translated as, quote unquote, the right way. Mm, okay. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of going to like, I'm going to kind of skim over some of the beliefs that Chen would, you know, boast upon his followers. Yeah. So as far as I could read, Chen Tao, the, the church, was a mixture between Buddhism, Taoism, ufology, <laughs> and a small speck of Christianity. Okay. Right? Very interesting mix here. They focused a lot on the reincarnation and the transmission of souls. So they believed that once you died, you know, you were bound to come back as something greater. They believed that the world was covered in quote unquote soul outside souls, which included anything and everyone from demons to people who were just outright bad influences. Hmm. It was said by Chen that the earth went through five different great tribulations going as far as the time of the dinosaurs. In these tribulations, it was said that only those in North America would survive and they would later be rescued by God in his flying saucer. Oh, Mm hmm. He really, he really meshed these well, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Reincarnation, God. saving from God, apocalypses, UFOs. Great mixture of everything. <laughs> I just think of like an Asian fusion restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> here's, a, here's a tostada with the <laughs> chicken bao on top. Um, so it, it, it was also taught to his followers that the solar system wasn't created by God or this so-called Big Bang that happens in mm-hmm. science, but that the solar system was actually created because of 
because of a previous nuclear war. Okay. I don't know how he backs this up with facts, but I would like to know. I mean, a lot of these, like, followers of these religions don't really ask for facts. I mean, yes. But I feel like as an outsider, I would like to understand why. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, just to get, like, some kind of an idea. Like, how? How did that happen? Yeah, because, you know... Hmm. How big were these bombs? Uh, Exactly. (laughs) It was also taught to his followers that if you did not want to feel the wrath of these outside demon souls, that you should turn to vegetarianism or veganism because we don't hurt living animals. I mean, okay. Which I mean, like, that doesn't sound too bad. (laughs) No. You know? Because it's like, you don't want to hurt living things. Eat plants. Cool. I'm okay with this, honestly. Plants are also living. Technically. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, I get, I get that. Like, you know, yeah. Yeah, you don't, you know, murder. I guess that's exactly. the whole thing. Like killing, you exactly. know, to be not of this, you know, evil, yeah. you know, murder killing ways you Mm -hmm. just don't eat murder or killed you know animals living things things. yeah yeah which i mean i you know don't totally oppose this i've tried vegan food vegetarian food it's great Mm -hmm. you know whatever it is what it is it is what it is (laughs) so back to the timeline chen and his followers had spent just a couple of months in california establishing their church when they decided that they wanted to move to Garland, Texas in 1997. And the reason why they moved to Garland, Texas was because to Chen Tao, it sounded like Godland. Garland, Godland. Therefore, that's where they needed to be. How did he find that? Was he just like looking on the map and was like, look at this place. (laughs) I don't know. He was just like, this sounds great. Let's just move thousands of miles. I'm not sure where he found Garland, Texas, but I honestly didn't know where this was until I Googled it. It's apparently a couple of minutes from Dallas. Oh, okay. But it's Dallas. Who cares about (laughs) Dallas? Anyway, uh, there, Chen purchased a home like located on Ridgedale Drive and little by How little are they moving sorry I don't know did they you have know, like it's, a it's caravan 1997 there's like a bus could be but you know it's also 1997 so you know moving fees are not as expensive as they are now so yeah well obviously they had to either take a ship or like a plane here that first time but well I think they took a plane mm-hmm. um but how they were moving... I mean, they might have purchased, like, a big van or something. Huh. I don't know. It's hard to say. But, uh, yeah. So, little by little, his followers started purchasing homes in the same neighborhood as Chen. So that it could all be just, like, this little community. Hmm. But, you know, they still kind of traveled back and forth to California. Uh, as long as well as other parts of the U.S., just to kind of gain more followers, kind of put their name Spread out there. Spread the word. Spread the word of Jesus. Spread the good word of the UFO flying Jesus. Yes. Yes. Well, I don't know if they actually spoke about Jesus. They just kind of mentioned God, God a lot. Yes. But, yeah. The UFO flying God. Yes. There you go. Now, in June of 1997, Chen and his followers had gained the attention of various news outlets while they were in Canada. I'm sure they did. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was said that Chen had received another glorious revelation from God, stating that they had to look for, quote, Jesus of the West, unquote. God had told Chen that this Jesus reincarnate would be about six feet tall, 28 years old, and would have a striking resemblance to Abraham Lincoln. That is weird. Yeah. Yeah. 
God had also told Chen that this man would be living in Vancouver, Canada. Hmm. Okay. Mm, yeah. Very specific, though. Yeah, very specific. So Chen and his followers had gone, searched far and wide in Canada for this Abraham lookalike. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And uh, they even went as far as putting out, like, ads on the newspaper looking for this Abraham Lincoln-looking dude. But no one ever came forward. Hmm. And that was kind of that. They just never find... They never found this Jesus man. Oh. Sadly. Yeah. By September of 1997, Chen had self-published another book titled... Gods descending on clouds, flying saucers to save people. Hmm. <laughs> I love this man's titles. Uh, in this book, Chen claimed that yet another revelation had been given to him by God. The claim was that God himself would appear at his home on Ridgedale Drive on March 31st, 1998. God would come down taking form of Chen himself, and he would be able to speak every language on the face of the earth. He would be able to walk through walls, multiply himself, as well as be able to greet and speak to every single person simultaneously. Wow. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The revelation continued on to say that God would announce the day that he would arrive by going on TV six days prior to his arrival on the 31st. He would go. So God uh, would just like take over all of the stations? Well, not all the stations. Channel 18, to be precise. Oh, so God can only access Channel 18. Yeah, I don't know if maybe that's just a channel nobody uses, but Channel 18 was where he was going to appear on a March 25th. To the world? To, the, to, the, to everybody on America. Okay, mm-hmm. in the Americas, okay. Yes, yes, because you know North America is God's land. Yeah, why, mm-hmm. why would he visit anywhere else? Exactly. So, in December of 1997, several other members uh, flew to Taiwan to convince more followers to come to America to be saved. During this time, the Taiwanese media started reporting rumors that Chen had been brainwashing these innocent people and had plans to go through with a mass suicide similar to the one committed by those in Heaven's Gate. Mm. Heaven's Gate. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And this happened, like, very close, like, right after that happened. So, like, Heaven's Gate was still very fresh in everybody's mind. People were like, this is sketch. He's being sus. Yeah. Crazy Don't guy. Don't drink the UFOs, Kool-Aid. Got on a flying saucer. This sounds strangely familiar. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so... And the reason why they kind of started these, like, rumors that there was this, like, mass suicide was because, well, they kind of thought, well, what if this, like, prophecy that this guy is talking about doesn't come true? Like, what are they going to do? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, this allegation made Chen just very upset. He went, he went on a TV channel in Dallas to let outsiders who had, you know, no knowledge of what was going on in this group uh, know that they were nothing like Heaven's Gate and that they, as a group, did not believe or condone in suicide. Mm -hmm. They instead believed that this biblical apocalypse would kill people if they did not listen to God's warning. And he also went on to tell an MSNBC reporter that if this said prophecy of God showing up didn't happen, then he was willing to allow people to stone him to death. Oh, okay. Yes. So he's really writing on this prophecy. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. He's he's pretty sure that, you know, God is telling him these things, therefore it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. He also went on to tell another reporter when asked again about this supposedly planned suicide, quote, 
members will be free to leave if nothing happens. We will conclude that God has changed his plan, but we do not think that this will happen. Everything will be clear on March 31st. So at least, you know, he's not making these people like just stay out of, you know. And then also, I feel like he's giving like an open door. So he's like, hey, yeah, you guys can leave. You don't have to stone me. Yeah. You know, but it's also kind of like if you guys leave, (laughs) you're all going to die and not be saved by God on his flying saucer. Mm, That's also. So it's like. It's like he's kind of giving them an ultimatum in a very nice way. Yeah. Yeah. He's kind of just kind of being a little a little manipulative. A little bit. Yeah. But, the, you know, that's something you'll see in a lot of cult leaders. <laughs> yeah. It's their whole thing, really. Yeah. So, prior to this, you know, end of world type situation that Chen was talking about, Chen and his follower, followers continued on with their, you know, lives, just like normal. You know, just waiting for mm-hmm. this to happen. Yeah. In early January, they had, they had taken a trip to Indiana and headed straight to Lake Michigan, where Chen, yet again, said God had told him that this particular place was sacred and that those who did survive this great tribulation on the 31st were to head to Lake Michigan, mm-hmm. and that's where God would come down on his UFO and save them. Okay. Right? Yeah. Lake Michigan. Never been there, but... I mean, cool. It's holy land. Holy land. Maybe we can go mm-hmm. when this pandemic disappears. <laughs> can learn. Learn about mm-hmm. the holy lands. Holy lands. So, Chen had also held a press conference on the 12th of March, you know, just some time prior to this big event, answering any questions that people on the outside may have about the event or about what he does or him or whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. Just, just letting them know. Mm-hmm. And, you know, while answering questions and everything, he continues to reassure everybody that this is nothing like Heaven's Gate. Nothing like that is going to happen. And he even allowed, he had built like this like gazebo type shrine situation Mm -hmm. in his backyard that apparently was supposed to be like where God would like that. God would see that and be like, that's where I'm going to go. That's where I have to be. And it, it was just like this like holy shrine situation. And so he allowed photographers from like these like news outlets, right, to take pictures of this shrine. And he had, you know, told the people that if they took, you know, like the clipping of that picture from the newspaper and they held it near to their heart, they too would feel the power of God. Hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. So with all of clipping, that little little, clipping, mm -hmm, the little clipping. With all of this, Chen had everyone's full attention. And, of course, preparations from the city, you know, started to to happen. Because, obviously, they were afraid that even though this guy is saying, okay, nothing like Heaven's Gate is going to happen, I don't know if I can trust, like, his word. So we're just going to, like, prep. Just just in case. Just in case. He's like a mass murderer. Mm Mm-hmm. So city officials, police... They were all starting to prepare for how to handle, you know, worst case control, worst, you know, worst case scenario. They had um, police keep a close eye on Chen as well as his followers because all these continued rumors of the suicide were going around that they they really just had to keep an eye on them. Like, okay, let's make sure they're not doing anything suspicious. You know, in the sense of like Heaven's Gate, they all bought like the same type of shoe. You know, it was just like a let's really make sure that nothing that they're doing is like out of the ordinary. Mhm. So uh with many residents obviously being pretty worried about what may be going on in their in their city, um the Garland Police Department had held a conference that Tuesday stating, quote, We do not know what's going to happen. We're working on assumption. Chen has said that he would come out of his home after midnight to reveal what happened on TV. 
But if Chen does not emerge, police plan to knock on the door, telephone the house, and if they hear sounds of distress, violence, or get no response at all, police will break the door down and enter. We would be remissant in our duties if we didn't consider the option of suicide. Mm -hmm. Unquote. Uh, They also sent roughly about 50 to 70 uh, like paramedics and police officers to this neighborhood to like camp out as well as um, various like news outlets just to kind of like camp out and like keep an eye on these people. Remaining vigilant. Yeah, very vigilant. And because they didn't want anything kind of like uh, coming between this like keeping an eye on them, they blocked off the entire neighborhood. And if like you came up to the neighborhood, they would check your ID. And if your ID didn't have like a, an address that was in that neighborhood, you could not go in. Mm-hmm. Cause they were like, we only need people who live here to be here. And then these like paramedics, these police officers, and then these, you know, news outlets to be mm-hmm. here. Like, that's it. No extra people. At about 10 PM on March 25th, news crews, you know, started to pull out the cameras, like set up, you know, get their mics ready to start Mm -hmm. covering what was going to go on with God's supposed arrival. And by 11 p.m., Chen's church members had come out to the backyard and formed a circle. Oh, okay. Yeah. And they all began to pray and chant various religious chants in Chinese and then bowing to this shrine. Mm Mm-hmm. At about 11.30, they walked out. Some of them gathered in the front yard, and then others went inside Chen's home. By this point, um, everyone knew that Chen's revelation, you know, was about to happen on TV. Channel 18, you know, Mm -hmm. waiting for, for God to appear. But when the clock struck 12, nothing happened. People looked up to the sky in hopes of seeing something, but they didn't. Channel 18 was nothing but static. And onlookers, media, and police officers waited in suspense as they waited for movement inside of Chen's house. Mm -hmm. At 12.25, Chen walked out of his home into the front yard and began to speak to the cameras through his interpreter, saying, quote, I want to emphasize that God's kingdom has already descended. God has already descended. But the pity is that the gospel of God's coming is known to only a few people. Because we did not see God's message on television tonight, my predictions of March 31st can be considered nonsense. Mm -hmm. I sincerely hope that everyone can keep an eye on the future developments And don't call us liars or something of that sort. Please trust what we say, because God really wants us to save a billion people from this great tribulation, unquote. Hmm. I mean, he was right to be like, you know, my 31st prediction, just Just throw that out. Just throw that out. It's not real. That might have been wrong. Okay, so... I wasn't lying. I just (laughs) maybe got the dates mixed up. So, you know. Yeah. Don't doubt me. Let's move on. (laughs) Uh, So Chen continued by saying that he would continue to pray and wait for God's answers or several instructions. And he made it clear to those that no longer wanted to believe in him that they were free to leave and go back to their lives that they had left in Taiwan or Thailand. I don't know why I said Taiwan, Thailand. Police and EMT stood by a couple of days after this whole shebang to make sure that none of his followers or him would turn to suicide. Mm -hmm. In a press conference released March 27th, Chen said, quote, I have never referred to myself as a prophet. I would recommend anybody not to believe what I say anymore. Unquote. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
In that same press release, he outlined a different theology that would explain what happened that night of the 25th and would help those understand of what may have or or what may happen on the 31st. A part of it says, quote, In truth, human soul and conscience are homogeneous to the structure of God's holy character. Therefore, please seek the perfection of conscience in your own soul. God will help you become God. Unquote. Hmm. That makes no sense to me. Someone explain. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> I mean, if you could just become God. I mean, that would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Just like Bruce Almighty, this shit. <laughs> I, I, I guess. And so just like that, you know, March 31st came by and the same preparations, you know, were done. You know, the EMT, the police, the barricading of the neighborhood, so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. And at about 10 a.m. at the time that Chen said God would appear, Chen came out and asked everyone that had gathered to see God to shake their own hands. And when everyone did so, he said, quote, you yourself are gods. Unquote. Is that how he's getting away with, with it? Oh, you just wait. And with that, he had claimed that in fact, God did come and multiply himself and shake everyone's hands. He then proceeded to say that God had in fact known every language because since Chen had claimed that everyone was God themselves, that then the language they spoke was the language God spoke. Hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So by like making these people like shake their own hands, he was like, ha ha, got you. God shook your hand because you're God. (laughs) Like, you got gotcha. <laughs> You done got Rick rolled. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. So then with this, he like turns to the camera and he says, quote, the kingdom of God has descended and God has already changed into human beings. You yourself are God. You are human beings as well as God. This is a chance given to us to play the role of God. If you think yourselves as nothing more than a pile of bones and flesh, you are going to die and perish in the great tribulation. So you have to think of yourself as gods or you'll die and perish? Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Pretty much. Pretty much. So... Since God literally didn't come down on his UFO, mm-hmm. he was like, oh, you guys are actually all gods. And see, see what I did there? You mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. Pretty and much. Uh, if you don't take this, this God life on, mm-hmm. you're going to die. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Correct. Mm. And, you know, because... This guy obviously has to, like, one-up himself and prove himself, I guess. He decided he wanted to prove his own godhood and decided to stare at the sun for multiple minutes. (laughs) Just (laughs) wide open, staring at the sun. That seems like like a great idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after several moments, he turned to the crowd and said that no mere mortal human would be able to do that if they were not God. I bet you he was, his eyes were hurting really bad. (laughs) Yeah, no, it was, it's, it said in a couple of articles that uh, multiple people had reported him just kind of doing this, like blinking profusely, (laughs) like after he was done. Uh, staring at the sun. He's like, yeah, no I'm mortal sure, could stare I'm sure at the sun. this guy saw shadows for like a week. <laughs> I'm sure he did. He didn't lose part of his eyesight. Yeah. So regardless of this other 
fail, obviously. He kept on with his claim that the apocalypse would happen at the end of 1999. And, I mean, a lot of people thought, like, the world was going to end in 1999. Because, you know, like, Y2K, you know, 2000. End of the world. That, that was, like, a thing. But, you know, it wouldn't just be, like, this, like, you know, regular old apocalypse. You know, where the sun comes down, kills everybody. He had said that this apocalypse was going to be a nuclear holocaust and that TVs, refrigerators, blankets, as well as houses would come to life. I could see the TVs and the refrigerators, not the blankets. Or the houses. Mm-mm. 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 Okay. He also went on to say that those people who rejected veganism and vegetarianism would be haunted by the animals they ate. Oh, okay. Which, I mean, low-key sounds pretty terrifying. Like, imagine, like, thousands of cows coming towards you. <laughs> That's scary. Because, I mean, in your whole life, you've had to have eaten, like, a, like a, a good amount of cows. Yeah. I mean, I know if, the, if we were talking about me particularly, I would be chased down by a lot of chickens. Yeah. Chickens. The amount of chicken nuggets I ate as a kid <laughs> was ridiculous. So, in September of 1998, he wrote yet another book titled The Appearing of God and Descending of the Kingdom of God, Saving Human Beings by Means of God's Space Aircrafts. God's Space Aircrafts. <laughs> In this book, he had predicted a couple of different prophecies that would happen during the year of 1999 until the end. And so uh, here are some of his, uh, his uh, predictions. Predictions, you know, he was trying to Nostradamus this thing. So he predicted that in January, China would attack Taiwan. February, the U.S. would pull its military forces from South Korea, and then in March, North and South Korea would be at war again. Between June and July, East Asia would be flooded like that in the Bible with, you know, the Ark of Oa, Noah. The Ark? Uh, the Ark of he Noah. He said the Nark. The Nark. God damn it. I can't hear myself <laughs> with these headphones. <laughs> A flood like that was going to happen, okay? A big old flood. And it was going <laughs> to flood countries like Japan, the Philippines, and all of these countries would then suffer this giant economic just crash. Well, obviously, the whole place flooded. How well, are you going to yeah. work? Yeah, I know. Between <laughs> August and September, it was said in his claims that Taiwan would blow up three nuclear plants starting the beginning of the nuclear war. Hmm. And then between October and December, this nuclear war would be so vast and expand throughout the planet, killing everybody. I can see that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then, you know, January, February, March come along, and none of these <laughs> things happen. Oh, goody. None, like nothing. China doesn't do nothing to Taiwan. South and North Korea aren't fighting each other, you know, so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. And then by April, Chen's followers had reduced to only about 35 of the original 2,000 members. Oh. Like a big chunk was like, I don't know, this guy doesn't seem legit anymore. <laughs> no, he does not. No. I mean, I, you should have realized after, like, the first fail. Mm-hmm. But most people, they didn't leave just because they just stopped believing in him. Apparently, a lot of his followers had no other choice but to leave because they were having problems with their visas, so they couldn't really stay here. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was, I was going to bring that up. I was like, these guys just all got, like, visitors visas? Like, well, because when they the- came here, I believe that they came kind of, like, as a church group. So they were given this like a refugee kind of thing or like yeah. a special visa. Or yeah. What? Cause they didn't all apply like individual visas. It was kind of like a group registration situation. Hmm. 
I don't know how that stuff works, but they did something along those lines. So the remaining members are said to have moved to Lockport, New York, and then continued to believe that this nuclear war was among them. And that, you know, the only way to survive was to go to these holy lands and then, you know, be rescued by God on his flying saucer. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as I could find online, the last anyone ever heard of Chen Tao was in 2001. Whether this group still exists, I'm not sure. I kind of doubt it. But then again, I mean, you'd be surprised with like the Internet nowadays. Yeah. Um, and then no one knows where in the world um, Han Ming Chen is at. He just like he dropped. just disappeared. Yeah. So this is kind of I mean it's it's a weird little cult. No murders happened, but I mean it's crazy what yeah. people believe. You know. I mean. To each his own. I mean, yeah, to each his own. I mean, if you want to believe in UFOs, cool. Now, God on a UFO, I don't know if I can believe that. But, mm-hmm. I mean, hey, hey, we do not know. Who are we? Who are we? We are to just tell a them any different. On this, this giant universe. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, that's, uh, that's my case. That's all I got for you guys this week. <laughs> so, come back. There'll be more. There'll be more next week for sure. Ooh, Mayor, what do you think about this Zodiac update we got a couple of days ago? I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, obviously they can't release it because obviously now the case is open again. Well, it's never been closed. It was just unsolved. But so I don't know. I don't know if it's going to give us, like, what we need to find out who it was. Well, as far as I read on, like, the article, um, they had released, I guess, like, a good majority of what the cipher said. Yeah, they couldn't release, like, the important stuff. Yeah, whatever it was. But it said, apparently, that whomever it was that called that um, TV show back in, like, the 70s wasn't him. Mm -hmm. So now, like, I guess we would be looking at, like, a prankster in the sense of, like, that guy who was, like, making phone calls and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, even then, like, it still doesn't really answer anything. It's not going to. I just, I feel like it's, obviously, the letter is just him boasting. Mm -hmm. The fact, like, the chance of somebody, you know, solving this this freaking ridiculous site, the code that this, this man like made up was like so slim, but even like, regardless of how unlikely it was that people would be able to solve it, there was still like a chance there would be somebody to solve it. Mm -hmm. And I just can't imagine them giving much information. Yeah. I feel like the, the, the code that would be the hardest to um, solve because of just like the vast amount of possibilities is the the that one singular line that he that he gives that apparently contains his name. Mm-hmm. I don't remember the name of the cipher, so I don't have the code because like some of them have like Z three forty Z four zero eight. Um, but it's, it was sent to the Chronicle, and it's the note that says, this is the Zodiac speaking, by the way, you have cracked my last cipher I sent you. Uh, my name is, and then that little line of code. Mm-hmm. Sorry, my cats are doing some weird crap. It's okay. So um, I'm, I'm guessing it's the one that was sent in 1970. I think it was prior to that little note that he sent about, like, blowing up the kitties on the school bus. Mm-hmm. So th- I think that would be the hardest one just because it is just a singular line. Yeah. And I There's feel not like much to go off of. Yeah, like, to yeah. compare letters and things like that. So I feel like if, for any reason, his name is actually in that line, like, that would be a breakthrough. But, I mean, I don't know. I guess we'll see. I mean, I wouldn't if I was a serial killer and I got, like, 
and I well, yeah, figured I was getting away with it, <laughs> I would not put my name in it. Yeah, but we're also women, and women are usually smarter. To, to yeah, stop. men are all about the the attention and the the fame of it all, and the, yeah, because he sent a lot of letters. Yeah, he wanted to stay relevant. Yeah, he wanted well, to. He wanted people to know what he did and what mm-hmm. he was doing. Yeah, I guess we'll see. I hope something of like big value appears before I die on this planet. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure the dude that did this is probably either I think ancient he's probably dead. or dead. Yeah. <laughs> either they, he's, like, in some old folks' home, like, rotting away, mm-hmm. or he's dead. Well, I feel like he probably is, well, let's see, because they estimated him to be between 35 and 45 back in, like, in the, 1969. Okay, yeah. I don't know. So if we went with that older age of 1969, like, homeboy, oh, shit, hold on, 2020 minus 1924, homeboy would probably be dead, 96. Yeah. So there's never, you know, there's not going to be a... I mean, we're not going to convict anybody, obviously, but I'd like to, like, at least know, like, what the guy's name was. But, like, even if you know, it's like... You don't, you're going to have to ask his, like, grandkids, who was your grandfather? They probably don't even know. They're probably like, my grandpa was just mean old man. (laughs) He was mean as shit. He was mean as shit. Uh, Hmm. He talked about having slaves. Yeah. That. I don't know. (laughs) He said he was the Zodiac, but no one believed him. Yeah. He just thought he was a crazy old man. (laughs) I don't know. We'll see. (laughs) All right, guys. That's uh, all we have for you today. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. If you'd like more content like you just heard, add us on patreon.com forward slash true crime dropouts. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram at true crime dropouts. And don't forget, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, and more. If we aren't on your favorite streaming service, let us know and we will see what we can do. Stay in school.